Hello everyone, today I am going to be talking all about intercepting communication. So in order to understand how it is that we can go about intercepting some network communication, we first need to understand how does that networking communication fundamentally work. Once we understand how networking communication fundamentally works, we're going to be able to understand its weaknesses, how it works, how it can be abused into enabling some let's say adversarial actor into intercepting um, networked communication. So as an example, we're just gonna kind of go to a simple example of sending mail. So you can imagine some house A and some house B and we wanna send a letter from house A to house B. Now, obviously you could kind of do that yourself. You could drive that letter from your house to the recipient's house, but you know, maybe, the house is several states away or even countries away, you're probably not going to do that yourself. You're going to use the postal service. You're going to use this elaborate uh, mail sending protocol in some sense, right? Where we, we drop off our letter into some postal service box and it gets routed, you know, it goes through from one zip code to another zip code to another zip code. It slowly gets closer and closer to the target destination before finally being delivered to the target recipient. So as the name of this uh, module implies, we are looking at intercepting communication. And if we want to intercept this letter, for example, in order to read it or maybe alter it or, you know, who knows what it is that we want to do, um, we need to understand how the mail system works. If we want to be able to attack a system, we need to be able to understand the system. And so if we think about kind of the basics of sending a letter, right, there's, there's a number of points that we could attack. We could go after the sender address, right? We could maybe, you know, watch them as they're, they're carrying the letter out of their house into their car and we could, you know, go snatch the letter there at that point in the protocol of sending a letter. We could go to the mailbox they drop it off in and kind of pull it out of there somehow and investigate it. We could look at one of the post office facilities or one of the trucks driving the letter and kind of snatch it off there and to intercept that letter. Or we could go all the way to the target address and before the recipient actually takes delivery of their mail, pulls it out of their mailbox, right? We pull it out first and we, we look at that mail first. But, so the, I mean, the important thing here is that we need to understand the mailing protocol in order to understand how we can attack the mailing protocol for intercepting that mail. Um, so something that you might not be aware of is what is known as the PS Form 3575. So it turns out that the mailing protocol within the United States has this PS Form 3575. So if we want to intercept mail, it turns out that we could actually abuse the mailing system itself into declaring some address change of the recipient. So on behalf of the recipient address, we could declare that they no longer live there and instead live somewhere else, right? We, they, they now live over here. This is, again, how we could abuse the mailing system into intercepting mail, right? We, if once we start to understand the mailing protocol, we can abuse the mailing protocol. We could declare on behalf of some other person that their address has been moved and suddenly mail is gonna be forwarded and now we are able to intercept that mail, right? Again, the critical thing here is we need to understand the system in order to attack the system, uh, in order to understand the flaws of the system, the weakness of the system. Now, obviously, don't do this, right? This is an example. This is an example of what we look in depth at the mailing system, what can be done. Uh, what the kind of possible attack surfaces. Don't do this though. It's super illegal, right? We're not gonna do this. Uh, this is just an example of what you might do with the mailing system to attack the mailing system. It's a weakness within the mailing system. Uh, obviously there's some remedies on it, but also one of the remedies is it's super illegal. If you get caught doing this, you're going to prison, right? Don't, don't do this. Uh, but in the context of more traditional uh, TCP IP uh, ethernet networking, um, we have to understand that in order to understand its weaknesses and how it can be abused. Because we have the same problem, as it turns out, within computer networking of basically determining where the recipient is, right? We're imagining back in the mail system, for example, that we have this dynamic evolving network of houses and recipients and things are fluid and changing and dynamic. 
which means the, the protocol needs to support that dynamic nature of, for example, some recipient moving to a different house. And so that's why the protocol of mailing a letter supports this concept of a house, uh, of a recipient of mail moving to some other house and mail being able to be forwarded. In much the same way, a computer network has protocols for handling this dynamic nature of a network, right? So in this example, we have a very basic network with just one host node sitting on here, um, chilling on the network. Um, but obviously this network can evolve as we just said. Some host B might join the network and then some host C might join the network. And we need to be able to figure out how to deliver network traffic from host A to host B or from host A to host C. And this, this network can keep evolving, right? We can be gaining hosts, we can be losing a host, right? Uh, we can gain that host back. It can, it can evolve with time. And there's a problem of determining um, what it means to go from host A to host B, what that fundamentally means in the network, uh, identifying how to get it there, what host B really is. And this lecture series is going to go kind of really in depth of what the networking protocol looks like. Um, because once you start to understand how this dynamic network can evolve and how the protocol supports that, you can understand the attack surface of it and how um, you can abuse it into, for example, intercepting communication.